Hi YouTube, um, I kept a whole load of camel spiders a couple of years back and uh, I kept this type uh, and I also kept fluffy camel spiders which are very similar looking but they've, uh, they're all covered in a whole load of hairs uh, and it makes them look quite fluffy. So check out my other videos to see what the fluffy camel spider looks like um, but this is just going to be about this type. Um, I mean they are some of the creepiest looking creatures in the world I think. Um, you watch a lot of kind of horror movies and creature feature movies and I don't think there's anything quite as creepy as this. I mean think of the film like Arachnophobia for example. Um, I think they just use huntsman spiders in that and I didn't find that particularly creepy at all. I think if they'd have used these guys, uh, even though they're not technically spiders, but uh, <laughs> it would have been much worse. They should do a film based on these guys definitely. Um, so yeah, this is uh, one digging a burrow. You can see here there's a flat stone and she's digging out the sand from around it and um, you have to kind of add other stones underneath it to support the stone otherwise sometimes they dig so much underneath it the stone can actually fall on top of them so you have to be a bit careful of that. Um, so yeah this stone has just got a couple of smaller stones underneath just holding it up and then they tend to dig their burrows just in the middle in between some other stones. Um, so yeah if you haven't seen my other video on fluffy camel spiders I think um, what keeps these guys alive for longer is if you keep them a bit cooler. Like a lot of books and things recommend keeping them really quite hot. Um, they do come from deserts, but uh, I think if you, like I did keep some of mine hotter and they died a lot sooner than ones that I kept cooler. Um, but I'll talk more about that in a minute because this one's just about to eat. So here's a cricket, watch the jaws, grab. So the actual grab is really fast. Um, and did you see it sort of wiggled its jaws a little bit before um, it actually kind of pounced on it? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of myths about these guys, like I mentioned in the other video about fluffy camel spiders. Um, because they're called camel spiders, a lot of people say that they um, they can kill camels and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, they're not venomous. Uh, but look at the size of their jaws. Their jaws are absolutely massive. Uh, and the um, yeah the actual kind of jaw muscles are huge. So can you imagine if they did bite you? I think it would hurt a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I just use the hands-off method. Uh, whereby if you're trying to transfer them to another cage or something. You just use a very long ruler. <laughs> that seemed to work for me. I just uh, kind of kept my fingers away from its jaws. I think that's what any sensible person would do. Just to be on the safe side. Um, they do lull you into a false sense of security quite often where um, they appear like they're quite slow moving uh, and they hardly move at all. And then suddenly they'll run. And they can, like a lot of people, again, the myth sort of says, oh, they can run at like 25 miles an hour. But they, they can't. They run about 10 miles an hour. But honestly, in a small area, 10 miles an hour is fast enough. Um, and you saw how quickly it kind of pounced on that cricket. So if it decided to pounce on your finger at that speed, I think you would know about it. Um, so yeah, their jaws, the creepiest thing about them, and look at the way the jaws kind of move like that, like independently, kind of slight. It's almost like they're kind of rubbing their hands together. <laughs> That's what I always think when they're doing that. They're like, it's like they're going <laughs> and kind of plotting something. Um, and yeah, when they get hold of a cricket, they absolutely kind of um, chew it to pieces almost instantly. It just becomes a whole load of goo, and then they just kind of um, suck it all up quite quickly. Yeah, going back to my um, keeping them a bit cooler theory. Um, what I thought was that although they live in deserts where it's roasting hot, they wouldn't be out in the sun in the daytime um, because if they were, they would just cook and they would dehydrate really quickly. Um, so what they do, they dig burrows. And I think if they dug down, you know, a reasonable distance, it might even be quite a bit cooler in their burrows during the day. And um, it might even be a bit humid, you know. Uh, and then they come out at night, whereas 
you know, if you think about it, in the desert, it's actually really cold at night time in most deserts, and you get quite a lot of uh, condensation or, you know, water droplets around. So I think, uh, yeah, just by keeping mine a bit cooler, they still ate all the time. Um, they still were active, digging burrows and things, but I just kept them cooler than a lot of books recommended, and they lived for a lot longer. Um, I didn't manage to breed them on this occasion, um, but I wasn't even entirely sure if I had males and females. I just uh, did occasional experiments where I would introduce some together and see what happened. There was no kind of fights, none of them kind of um, ate each other or anything, uh, but I didn't kind of witness any breeding behaviour either. So I may try again in the future, and it might just be a case of experimenting with different... Uh, temperatures and different humidities maybe just for a short period of time when you're wanting to actually try and um, mate them uh, and then if you do see mating occur I think the important thing is to kind of leave the female alone to make a burrow um, so she can kind of um, you know lay her eggs or have her babies or whatever in the burrow uh, in peace but isn't this like watching them eating crickets like one of the coolest things? Like I could watch them eat crickets like this for hours. Um, I know that's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, I just love watching this sort of thing. It is like having a little um, mini monster in your house. <laughs> okay, look at it, like rubbing its jaws together again. <sighs> it's definitely scheming something. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like I say, these are some of the most creepy looking creatures in the world, I think. Um, there's another um, thing that I've kept in captivity, which is a giant centipede, which I find even creepier, um, Scolopendra. Um, and I've got a little uh, clip of that right on the end of this video, actually, so you can see uh, what a Scolopendra looks like, because that's another thing I've kept in captivity. Um, I suppose the the difference is that Scolopendra is venomous, you know, and the bite apparently is really painful, you know, like it sort of feels a bit like putting your hand in fire or something if you get bitten on the hand. So, um, yeah, I kept those and I, I kept them with a lot of caution, like I kept them sort of in a cage with uh, a, a lid that was screwed down. So to be able to get into the cage with the um, giant centipedes, I would have to undo four screws every time I wanted to feed it, just to be on the safe side, because I think I would have nightmares otherwise if I was always thinking uh, it could be escaping right now and it could be in the same room with me at night time. <laughs> um, yeah, they really are. Uh, quite scary but again like people would be like why why keep it if it you know if you're scared of it or if you find it creepy but again it's a fascinating thing to watch like with a giant centipede the legs kind of moving and just the speed at which it catches its prey it's really good fun to watch um okay so here it is this is a scolopendra um this one's, you know, less than a foot long. So you do get some really, really big ones. Um, and I'd love to keep those one day. But at the moment, they're really quite expensive. Um, and again, like this one's got a cricket and it's eating it. And the same with these as the camel spiders. Sometimes if you if they're hungry and you throw a cricket into their cage, even if you throw it right at the opposite end of the cage... Um, it can sense that that cricket is there somehow, probably through vibrations on the ground or something, and it will be over there. Like, it'll get from one side of the cage to the other side of the cage in, like, a split second, and it'll be on that cricket. It's like it's almost like, um, you know, like it's got a, some kind of uh, supernatural power, kind of supernatural ability to just find the thing instantly. Uh, so again, like you wouldn't want to kind of accidentally touch a bit of moss or something at the wrong side of the cage at the time when the centipede was in sort of hunting mode because uh, it'd have your finger and it would be very painful. And again, the jaws on these things, I know you can't really see it in this video particularly, but the jaws are massive uh, and they kind of move slightly independently of each other. Um, so they have this almost 
what looks like a sort of chewing kind of <laughs> um it's not chewing but you know what i mean they kind of wiggle backwards and forwards and uh yeah it's really quite creepy to watch okay well i hope you've enjoyed watching this video um like i say check out the other video on fluffy camel spiders i'll put it up at the end uh, so you can just click on it um and please hit subscribe to see my other kind of exotic pet videos um, I've got an armadillo for example um, but also yeah I keep all kinds of weird kind of invertebrates and reptiles and amphibians um, so I'll be posting videos quite regularly of those so yeah hit subscribe if you want to see anything I post in the future thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video